I will be honest with you. I kind of am hoping that this one is going to be more emotional like some of the previous work that I've reviewed. It's perfect for you. Oh, she's like singing out of my soul. Sometimes we get lost in our own little world, but it's all so much bigger than we realize. Hey, what's up? It's your girl, Rosalie. Welcome to the Ultimate YouTube channel. What do we do here? We go around the world exploring world music and psychology. Guys, before I get started, shout out to all my patrons and members. If you want to level up and get ahead, check out memberships here on YouTube. Check out Patreon and buy me a coffee. And if you want to figure out how to make a suggestion via donation, check out buymeacoffee.com forward slash Rosalie Elliott. Fauzia, our beautiful Moroccan-Canadian queen. I haven't listened to some of her stuff in a while. And uh, I've been told she put out a new song called Für Elise. Für Elise is a uh, composition by Ludwig van Beethoven. And it is, what do we know about it? It's an A minor for solo piano, commonly known as Für Elise, one of, the Beethoven's, one of Beethoven's most popular compositions. It was not published during his lifetime, only discovered 40 years after his death. A song that I think many often like to try to learn on the piano, <laughs> including myself. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Fauzia made a song called Für Elise, which is interesting. And, well, on one hand, she titled it Für Elise. Okay, Für Elise. She didn't put the, dot, the dots as in German you do. Für Elise. Is that because it's hard for, you know, English speakers to pronounce, perhaps maybe for copyright reasons or, you know, in, in order to not be accused of doing something that's identical to the original? Let's see what this is about. Bold move to title something so similar to a very famous, very popular, very well-known composition after uh, a project by a composer that is world-renowned that has left a legacy and greatly impacted the music industry. But if anyone has a right to do that, I would say it's Fauzia. And I'm not saying that to over, you know, glorify her, but because I believe she's a phenomenal artist, she is uh, an amazing singer. I will be honest with you. I kind of am hoping that this one is going to be more emotional like some of the previous work that I've reviewed. The more recent work of hers has often been more poppy, still really good and really catchy, but it was more to me. This is just subjective, subjective opinion. Felt more like it was the radio worthy pop mainstream feel, the kind that is necessary to put her on the map. I understand. But my personal favorites are the type that I would listen to and react to at the beginning. But we shall see. Make sure to subscribe if you want, if you like what you see here and if you want this channel to grow. Let's do this. You ready? Okay. Ooh. All right, I'm rewinding and starting over already. Beautiful way to honor this composition by starting with that famous chord progression and those notes. La da 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 da. And instead of continuing with da 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 da. Right, it switches up, but it's a beautiful way to have that knot to do justice to Fur Elisa. It would have been weird to name this song the title that it has and then do some type of different chord progression or um, note combination. So I like that, but still different enough to not say, Oh, you just took the original and sang over it. Interesting imagery here socks in high heels with what are those safety pins that have beads on them written for Elisa? which is also interesting, but dazzled socks and shoes with beads, the kind of beads you often find on best friends bracelets, I suppose, um, and safety pins. Safety pins often being things that we use to hold things together, right? When a garment is torn, when we're trying to adjust something to make it more form-fitting, or we are trying to hold something together that has been torn apart. Just a couple of thoughts here. Socks in shoes, often also a controversial topic, <laughs> uh, right? Amongst Germans also, that stereotypical, uh, you know, they're wearing socks and their sandals. Um, but here, more maybe that schoolgirl vibe, right? The black heels with the white socks. Maybe I'm overanalyzing, but that's what we do. So let me start over. Very artsy attire that she's wearing this, these shoes. Her sleeves, note the sleeves of her outfit, that nod to classical music. I'll dance, I'll dance like a puppet on your string. I'll sing when you order me to sing. 
I'll ring like a desperate violin. Ooh. If there was ever, ever a song, my friends, since we're all about music from around the world and psychology, that captures what it's like to be in a relationship with a narcissist or a toxic, abusive relationship with someone with severe mental disorders, this just might be it. I don't know there's a whole lot of songs that, are, that shed light on that and... Um, you know, not to take away from any other projects or to overglorify this, but for what she just created here, for this time, this day and age we live in, and this moment, because this is the moment I'm listening to this, okay? Many other moments, other songs will be relevant and perfect to capture a certain message. For here and now, and what I'm experiencing, this beautifully, painfully captures that. But let's talk about the psychology of the lyrics in just a second. At least that's my first impression. I love. The dreamy, cutesy revision, or dare I say, interpretation she brings to classical music. What I mean by cutesy is her shoes and those safety pins and the beads, that gives it a little bit of a romantic, modern feel. Her attire, the puffy sleeves, all these things affect how we perceive people, right? The way people are dressed, what they're wearing, color schemes have a psychological effect on us, sounds, vocal, comp uh, vocal timber, vo um, musical compositions, the instrumentation used, all these things affect us. If this was, would have been a heavy metal song, it would have had a different impact on many of us than this did. And, of course, part of that is subjective because music is art, art is subjective. But overall, various sounds impact us in certain ways. There's even studies done on certain uh, hertz frequencies, right? The, the measurement, the unit that sound waves are measured in are called hertz. And even the hertz frequencies we find in music can have a different impact. There are certain studies that speak on the impact it has on our heartbeat, that what it does with our with the neurons firing in our brain. Right, that is a fascinating topic we won't get into. But overall, we are learning that 
because we're energy, because there are waves all around us from light waves to sound waves, they impact us, right? They say that blue light or being on your phone right before bed and that blue light and all that is not ideal for our sleep regulation and our rhythms. And honestly, regardless of how much or little we know about these studies, to me, it makes sense. We are nature. We're part of the ecosystem and the whole system in our world is operates off of cycles. So why wouldn't we, why wouldn't we, right? Have there certain cycles and certain systems in us. And so sound, music, all these things impact us in various ways. They all affect us a little differently, but generally speaking, certain things allow for certain chemicals to be released. And the beauty here of what we are perceiving visually. Let's talk about that first. Beautiful woman, of course, that already makes an makes an impact, right? You have an attractive, beautiful female who is dressed professionally, coming in with a lot of elegance and beauty, very composed, yet singing with so much pain and emotion that those of you who know this type of feeling, what she's singing about will be touched by this deeply or may feel it differently. The uh, puff sleeves, that beautiful blouse under that black dress, to me, was a beautiful nod to classical music, what we often associate with that classical music time, baroque, romantic. The shoes also, again, that modernized, cutesy touch to it, very elegant still, but still bringing in a little bit of that brand flair that she puts on a lot of her music. Even when I look at some of her social media, the cat, her cat, some of the um, anime vibe to some of her her work it fits the beads put on the sock with that safety pin again kind of interesting because those beads with the name for Elise the name of this song this composition and but also beads that you often find on friendship bracelets and friendship necklaces as I mentioned earlier and that is often something we give one another in our innocent youth to show our camaraderie to show our loyalty to one another right bff more a thing perhaps done amongst girls but you find you know people exchanging beads putting beads on things to label something to name it to give someone something special that shows hey we belong together i made this for you the safety pin again not even symbolic in my mind to holding something together barely holding something together perhaps trying to keep things together that are torn and broken different ways we could poetically interpret that her standing there in all her beauty then the way that this piece, let's speak about um, beyond the cinematography and the camera, how she flawlessly spins as she's singing, making these crazy runs, um, but very beautiful cinematography, well done music video. When we talk about the music composition, very fitting it would start with the grand piano, very, very fitting to play for Elise like this, right? Um, because it still is this nod to the original composition, but still giving it its own twist, still reimagining it. What's interesting is to t that she's taking that she's taking für Elise and she's saying it beautifully, by the way, even though German is not her native language. She said für Elise very well. Um, but the fact that she took this song and that she reimagined it in her own way um, is beautiful. Now, the original. Let's look at the original for a second. M the meaning of Beethoven's für Elise. Who was Elise? Right. The big question. Elisabeth Röckel and Beethoven. It's one of Beethoven's best known works, but for many years people have been trying to figure out who was für Elise. And it is actually called Beethoven's Bagat Bagatelle, number 25, Nummer 25, in A minor, rarely, however, referred to in such grandiose terms, classicfm.com says. Instead, it's what we know and refer to as für Elise. But it's a nickname, frankly, should have never existed. Beethoven did indeed include a dedication on the manuscript, but it was für Therese. Great. Poor Therese must have been slightly miffed when, thanks to a rather slapdash copywriter called Ludwig Nohl, the dedication on the public published version of the work was changed to someone quite different. So who was Elise? ClassicFM.com says it's widely acknowledged that Therese was the true dedication Dedicati für Elise, a woman to whom Beethoven proposed in 1810, the same year he composed this work, and she was also the owner of the manuscript. Other researchers, however, suggested she could have been a German soprano named Elisabeth Röckel, and this, uh, other sources show that she often met with Beethoven, who fell in love with the young woman and wanted to marry her. So was it for Teresa Malfatti? Was it for Elisabeth Röckel? Was it for Elise Behrensfeld? 
different theories on it. Um, which that too, in its in and of itself, I find an interesting connection to Fauzia's lyrics, and we'll talk about that in a second as well. But the musical composition, the way that this piece started, beautifully honoring the original, yet making it her own, revising this in a beautiful way. The passion, the the emotion that even just the piano awoke, a lot of drama, a lot of crescendo, gradually growing, gradually increasing with emotion and pain. The violin, the way she harmonized with that violin, my friends, I want to listen to it again with you in a second. That too, an instrument that conveys a lot of emotion in my mind, a lot of elegance and beauty, and allows also for this feeling of somber reflection. Let's talk about the lyrics. I'll dance, I'll dance like a puppet on your string. Now that also is interesting to start her lyrics with because she has a song named Puppet. She also has a song, what is it called? Um, Tears of Gold, various songs that speak on either a broken heart and a toxic relationship being controlled by others. Very meaningful lyrics that often deal with various types of relationship. And so to start with, I'll dance like a puppet on your string. I feel a fitting nod to her um, other work. I'll sing when you order me to sing. I'll ring like a desperate violin. And then the way she harmonizes with the violin as she's singing about the violin and as she vocalizes. But even here, using words, beautiful rhymes, of course, ring and sing, violin, string. But using words or the the concept here being that of music fitting to a composition about Für Elisa. It's all about strings and it's all about singing and music. So using these references here, very fitting conceptually. You're so musical, an artist. You make a lie sound like it's true. You're unusual, creative. What I do to be your muse. Okay. And again, lyrics and uh, that are all about the topic of music, strings, singing. You're an artist. You make a lie sound like it's true. Sound, right? A lot of lingo that fits to compositions and music. You're unusual, you're creative. All these things that also, when we look at the original, we would associate with, right? Beethoven being creative, being a genius. And the irony here, or is it a tragedy? The fact that there's all these different um, debates or theories on who exactly Für Elise was for is interesting because here she's speaking of what I do to be your muse, right? This longing to belong to someone, this longing to to be of interest to the other. And if we look at Beethoven and the fact that there's all these different women who could have possibly been the theme or the um, dedicatee of this song, to me, that does make me think that's how love often works, the tragedy of love, right? Love unrequited, loving someone, not receiving it in return, not being as important to the other as you might want them to be or wanting to marry someone and it doesn't work out or for whatever reason, right? The fact that there was not just one woman in Beethoven's life, which is the story for many of us, not just one man, not just one woman. We may meet someone, we have our hearts broken, we break up, we end up marrying someone else. Sometimes that doesn't last, right? There's all these different ways that people encounter one another, that they experience life. But because people can't even fully decide necessarily on who for Elise is for, I find that an interesting connection here to be speaking of, I wish you'd play me like a like my name is for Elise. I wish I would be your muse, right? Um, and that to me is somewhat of a parallel to say, well, who, which of the women was this composition for? Beethoven, who are you talking to? Who are you writing for? Who was on your mind? Who had, who was your muse at the time? A woman who says, play me. There is this song by Tony Braxton, play me like a, Sp like a Spanish guitar. To be played by someone is an interesting double entendre here because the theme of the song to me is being played in a toxic way. It to me implies this unhealthy relationship, maybe with a narcissist, someone who's codependent, who wants to be loved, who keeps pleading for affection and acceptance and is being played. But using the double entendre and saying, play me like my name is for Elise, as if as if this composition was for me, as if I'm the woman who this is for. Let me be Elise. Let me be the woman you composed this for. Play me like an instrument, something that we embrace with passion and with love and affection that we hold close, right? I want to be that to you, right? This plea to this person who ends up, again, double entendre, playing her. Lie to me and say you'll never leave. Drown me in your twisted melodies. Even that concept we find in other songs, right? Lie to me. Um... Say you'll never leave. This desperate, unhealthy plea of, I'll take the toxic, I'll take the suffering, I just don't want you to leave me. This severe fear of abandonment and rejection at the cost of 
being played, of being lied to. Drown me in your twisted melodies, okay? Being lied to, dr- being drowned in something, full consumption, full obsession, if you will. That's what that sounds like to me. In the twisted melodies. And the way that the composition shifted here and the way that the notes descended, and uh, I'll have to go back just to show you again, it was so fitting to what she was singing here. Melodies that sounded twisted, notes that were, that were, um, as he played down the note scale, just so fitting to that concept of the twisted melody. The way that she, the run that she did when she sang about something going down the spine, oh my gosh, right? Running down the spine as she's running down the notes with her run, with her vocal run. It was phenomenal. I'll pretend you wrote them all for me. Interesting, so interesting, witty to say, I'll pretend you wrote them for me. Fitting to this idea of play me like my name is for Elise. I wish you, I'll pretend you wrote this for me. I'll pretend that you actually love me. I'll pretend that I'm the one you picked. And while this is fitting to the story with Beethoven and not knowing exactly which woman this was for and wanting to be the woman he wrote it for, it's also fitting to relationships nowadays, which is why I started with saying what a fitting song beautiful to tie in world music and psychology because it speaks so much on toxic relationships but it's fitting to world music not only because Fauzia is Moroccan Canadian and brings a part of the world to us but even in the way that she integrates both western contemporary music and elements of soul and pop with classical music but she also brings in her Arabic quarter notes I don't know if you noticed that but some of her runs in the second half of the song were these what are referred to as Arabic quarter notes I believe and the way she runs and brings that those elements of the oriental and honoring her culture is beautiful and just this amazing combination I'll pretend you wrote them all for me okay fitting to the Beethoven analogy but also to someone who just is willing to be lied to and pretend I'll jump if you ask I'll say how high right that's that idiom or that that saying if, um, if, if you tell someone to jump and they respond with how high they're not even asking from where or to where they just need to know how high there's no condition there's no Additional information necessary. They're willing to do whatever it takes. I'll run like a shiver down your spine. Okay. Also fitting. Jumping, running. These words that all a bunch of verbs here. I'll dance. I'll sing. I'll ring. I'll jump. I run. And uh, I'll ring could also be if, back to the beginning real quick. This idea of I'll call you. I'll be there for you. Like a desperate violin. Double entendre again. I'll run, I'll jump, all these action words and words that we find when we look at people who are willing to do whatever for their abuser or for the narcissist or for someone who is really not, who doesn't love them because love is not a feeling, it's an action. And when someone is just, when it's one-sided or someone is abusing you, that is not love. And even though we sometimes feel we're sticking around for out of love, sometimes it's also codependence or fear of rejection. I'll run like a shiver down your spine. Again, uh, this nod, this idea of I'll run, I'll, I'll be there for you. I'll be as close as your spine. I'll run, I'll be there for you. But I'll run like a shiver down your spine. That's something very intimate, but also kind of scary. When we have a shiver down our spine, it's because something is eerie or is scary. So perhaps now we're tapping into even more of the, the intensity of how unhealthy and creepy this is. Shiver down your spine. She does that run perfectly. For you, I would give my own life. All right. Now, this to me is the epitome. Ha, I finally said it right. In one of my videos, I said epitome. <laughs> German is my first language, born and raised in Germany, Cuban and German, just as a side note. Grew up bilingual, but most of my education was in German up until college. So I say words wrong every so often. And I got the heat for saying um, epitome wrong. Um, but I, I, I'm okay with that because it shows that I speak more than one language. So, epitome. The epitome of the song, to say I would give you my own life. You'd be willing to die for this person. And that too is interesting if we're talking about life and death and the fact that this wasn't even released in Beethoven's lifetime. But I digress. You're so musical an artist and it goes back to the chorus. You make a lie sound like it's true. All right. And here we're tapping into the psychology some more. Very typical characteristics of narcissists, right? Right pathological liars at times um inflating or yeah inflating things that they've done or that they can do twisting things right those twisted melodies she speaks about they gaslight you make you believe that you're crazy that something's wrong with you they pull you like a puppet it's all about their ego and of course there's various types of narcissism we're learning there's the overt narcissism often very 
in your face and very grandiose, often covering up for severe low self-esteem. And then you have the covert narcissists where a lot of things are more um, are harder to identify. They may see more normal in person. And when I say they, I'm not d- 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 addressing this as if they are some type of diseased people. It's a personality disorder. And I also want to acknowledge that narcissism is loosely used nowadays. We watch reels, we find checklists, and then if we meet two of those 20 criteria we are worried work with narcissists or we think everybody and their mama is so uh, be careful with that that word is overused and we're too quick to try to diagnose people through a reel on instagram youtube or facebook i'm not speaking of that trend of seeing a characteristic or two of things that people do in their anger and their frustration and insecurities i'm speaking of the actual diagnosable personality disorder of narcissism and the various subcategories a lot of toxic traits that go into that though um one of them being the being unwilling to see that they have a problem right um ordering people around or pulling people like puppets a lot of manipulation like i said gaslighting very creative in their strategies they struggle at being having empathy it's all about them somehow at the end of the day and this uh, this phrase you make a lie sound like it's true i feel like that too captures very well that dilemma when you're in a relationship with a narcissist or with someone who struggles um, with that type, those type of personality disorders, because when someone is able to make a lie sound like it's true, the people in relationship with them don't know what to believe anymore to the point of questioning their own sanity. And that is a very lonely, very painful, painful place to be. And unless you've been there, it's kind of hard to grasp, I would I would believe. Um, in theory, we can have cognitive empathy. We understand what that must be like. But really feeling it, really understanding that type of pain, when you've been there, you're possibly, my thought, my theory, you're possibly even more likely to understand how severe that pain is, that loneliness of being around someone or with someone and desperately trying to make it work, desperately not wanting them to leave. And then it goes to her vocalization, uh, also phenomenal, bringing in some of the Arabic influences. You're so musical and artist. Won't you play me like? Won't you play me like? My name is Elise. And again, that double entendre, playing someone, manipulating them, playing games, but also playing them as if she is that piano, that violin, wants to be played like that instrument, held closed intimately connecting with but it's all a game saying play me like my name is Felice also a beautiful way from beginning to end to tie it back to that original composition very brilliant way to nod at the original and at the story the historical story and debate and question that goes with this composition but making it very modern very relatable I'm very impressed I was hoping it would be something like this where she's tapping into her phenomenal crazy good vocal abilities where she's showcasing her runs and all that she can do her amazing range and where the lyrics are very profound and the whole composition i'm i'm really a fan of a lot of this type of work of hers where it really gets you in the feels let's listen to it one more time together and i'll I'll point i I don't want to pause but i'll point to some of those parts i'm referring to I'll dance, I'll dance like a puppet on your string I'll sing when you order me to sing I'll ring like a desperate violin mm-hmm. You're so musical and honest You make a lie sound like it's true i 
And I'm gonna cry. Dang, woman. Her skill, her range, the runs, the rasp, the timber. There's so many other things we could say. You know, and the thought that I had towards the end, I'm like, you know, I could see some people when it comes to this type of pain, this type of longing to be loved. I could see some people being like, why would you want to be played like that? Why would you put up with that? But personally, because I've experienced some of it, I can empathize. And I think many of us can empathize from a cognitive level, you know, being hurt by someone, played by someone that, you know, is painful. Some of us can empathize from a from an emotional standpoint. We we know what that feels like, right? We can really feel with the person that's going going through that. But a lot of times going through it ourselves bring it hits home even more, brings it even more personal. It would be easy to think, oh goodness, right? Why not just leave? Why be used like that? But when you love someone and when you're desperately trying to make a work or date Make lies sound like it's true. They make you believe that you are good enough or that they do want you or they string you along, but they also throw in some truth into the lies. And so they're right when they say, well, I did tell you such and such, right? And so it, le it leaves us feeling confused or we end up doubting our sanity because we think, wait a minute, they did tell me this and that and I still, you know, allowed this to go on or I still engaged with them. But with, even with the lies, even with the manipulation, there were still elements of truth, right? Which m brings for much more confusion. So the pain here of longing to be loved, of the fear of rejection, of, of being willing to be played, pleading with someone to be the one this song is for, play me like my name is for Elise, let me be Elise in your life, play me, um, is phenomenal. The lyrical art here, the double entendres, the poetry, again, I'm impressed. Fauzia, great job. Guys, what do you think? Comment below. How does this make you feel? What do you think about this one? Personally, I am excited. I got to watch the live performance with you and tap back into some of those golden moments. Ha, see what I did there with Fauzia. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe. Share this video with someone else. If you had a fun comment, click like, and I'll see you on the next ride. Heyo.